rift on Twitter. I know that you have a very conservative fan base, and in your comments sometimes you'll see a lot of commentary about sort of the great replacement theory. What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on that? Oh boy. What are your thoughts on your comment your, the comments on your post telling me to kill myself? Horrible. Yeah, yeah. horrible. Obviously against that. Yeah. So will you come out and, and condemn that publicly? Oh, I would condemn it anytime. I'm against, you know, I'm against murdering anyone, of course. So you're against death threats against against me? I yeah, I'm I would I So she tries to dodge the question and says, how do you feel about people commenting on your tweet that I should kill myself? And she's like, no, that's bad. I'm not in favor of that. And, I, and now she's just gonna be like, but answer the question, though. I'm a big, you know, as somebody that's dealt with a lot of online harassment, I don't I don't defend uh, threatening to murder anyone. But I guess I'm curious, you know, because a lot of times it comes after an attack from the, in the media, like some, someone like you or another journalist. So are you saying that, like, you know, if somebody posts something and then attacks follow, that person should answer for those attacks? No, that's not what I'm Oh, oh no, the walking it back. Do you, oh, so if you if you post something and it leads to harassment, you think that's, oh, because that's literally libs of TikTok's whole thing, inspiring terror attacks. I'm saying, oh, okay. I'm saying that they, they, people like you tell me that all the time, so I'm just asking if you think the same thing. Yeah, I don't think I have said that here, but I... You know, I think it's I think it's kind of interesting. I guess in the conservative movement, there's this ideology around sort of white nationalism, um, which is a, obviously kind of a hardline ideology that's generally been pretty critical of Jewish communities. And I'm wondering. I like how Taylor Renz is doing what I recommend that you guys do, and it's arguing uh, like meta, debating meta, like break out of the level of not talking about the real problems that these people will try to get you into and just like don't even ask are you a white nationalist ask so a lot of people in your space and you know part of a, a big part of conservatism is white nationalism the belief that and then listing a bunch of things that she has said um and then force her to either defend it or walk it back walking it back makes it look like she's a coward or a traitor to like many of her followers and not being able to defend it makes her look weak and the position look weak to people who are still in the middle and are falling for the propaganda. As a Jewish woman, how do you feel about sort of aligning yourself with those people and accounts? You know, you see this sort of rhetoric God, in your replies. I only bring it up. I'm not saying that, that you necessarily endorse that rhetoric. I would imagine that you don't. But how do you kind of think about those nuances when you're thinking about kind of the audience that you're building? Um, some of your audience says we should top off kids' body parts. How do you think? What do you think about that? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, okay. For one, obviously, an extremely weak and dishonest debate strategy is someone asks you a question and then deflect with another question unrelated. Um, it's literally like the Ron Swanson thing, where Ron Swanson, like, I don't know if you've seen um, Parks and Rec, but there's an episode where Ron Swanson says, I hate government meetings, so whenever I go to them, I always respond with a question that's somewhat passive-aggressive no matter what the, the question I'm asked is, and I say nothing. Like, she's basically trying to pull that. Like, no matter what question she's asked, she doesn't answer a question, but just responds with a question passive-aggressively. But she's not doing it well, because she keeps getting tricked into responding to some of the questions. Like a girl. So the way it looks is, that question about aligning with Nazis as a Jewish woman... And her, like, deflecting on that one makes it look like she's weak on that point. Rather than she's just going to deflect every question like a troll. It just makes her look like she was too scared to answer that. She says she wants to be a boy, so she tops off her breasts. I'm a big, uh, you know, I believe in personal liberty and bodily autonomy, so, personally. So kids should be able to... I love liberty. I love democracy. Boys. I mean, I believe in gender ideology. I guess I, I personally, my, my feeling is that I believe in personal liberty. I grew up in a town where a lot of people for their middle school graduation, women got nose jobs. I knew somebody that got a boob job at age 14. I wouldn't argue with them on this point. I would just say, I just agree with what the scientific consensus is right now. Right now, it, it seems to be that sex and gender are not the same thing, that sex is not a binary, but instead a spectrum, and that um, being trans is a valid thing, and that gender transitioning care is valid. It's why it's legal in so many states, and why it's taken so much uh, Republican overreach, in large part, with your help, in order to ban it in hard red states with a nonpartisan push so uh, or a partisan push um and yet overwhelmingly scientific institutions across the board are calling this out as anti-scientific including uh florida's i i'm literally debating for her right now but i mean like i feel like you just say 
I believe in what the science says. How do you feel about Ron DeSantis banning the teaching of AP psychology in Florida because it doesn't align with the anti-trans ideology he, he wants? How do you feel about science classes being banned because the science doesn't agree with you politically? Basically, respond with an play her game back. That's what I'd do. And I, I guess I struggle to kind of understand the criticism when there's certainly no criticism of that sort of thing, right? But then there's criticism of this other sort of gender affirming, you know, stuff. So, so you're you know. comparing a boy being allowed to chop off his penis to a teen. This isn't happening, by the way. Like, I think the most similar scenario where this could happen is potentially if you are 16 years old or 17 and you have A, got parental consent, B, have had a very long, like over a decade of psychological oversight by multiple medical professionals. I believe it takes a written doctor's note by three confirming gender dysphoria. At that point, you can get on hormone blockers. But as for getting bottom surgery, it's so not common. Like, I know that famously... The, what I did not know a lot of trans people prior to um, becoming like a lefty YouTuber, but I, I met a few shortly before. And it was a big part of like my sort of like evolution into becoming a lot more knowledgeable about this stuff is just meeting trans people and like becoming friends with them and learning about their experience. Um, it's kind of where I learned a lot of the fundamental things I knew about trans stuff when debating people it was just meeting trans people, learning about what their lives were like by being friends with them, and using that knowledge to debate. But since then, I've filled my brain with a lot more academic and scientific and uh, psychological research knowledge, and I feel like that's very handy. The problem is, like I said, Taylor is good at it like 50% of the time in this debate, but you have to argue meta. You have to recognize that she is not honest. If she's going to be dishonest, be more dishonest than her, not on the topics, but in the debate style. Every single move needs to be with the goal of demoralizing and taking the words out of libs of TikTok's mouth. Teenage girl getting a nose job? Um, well, just to be extra clear, I don't believe that 13 year olds are able to make those sort of medical decisions. That's absolutely true. Minors are, yeah. Oh, really? Where? Yeah. Um, children's. So she said 13 year olds and then she said 13 year olds aren't able to make those decisions. And she said, minors. Yeah. Okay. Minors is anyone under 18. Do you think a 17 year old getting gender transitioning care is the same as a 13 year old doing it? I'd say those are very different. National Hospital in DC gives 16 year olds hysterectomy. Oh, 16 year olds. They gave me that. They told me that directly. They said 16 girls and younger. That's what they said. So Reminder, by the way, I have a friend who has uterine cancer, like a, a, a there is like a cancerous growth in her uterus. And due to the laws being passed in red states, she is having a really hard time finding a way to get that dealt with due to the fact that legally, due to the fact that the procedure would have to render her reproductive system no longer functional, legally it is considered an abortion. And so doctors have said that up until she is literally dying of septic shock, she cannot be operated on to get the tumor or cancerous growth out. So we're talking about the potential for 16-year-old girls who have like, obviously that's not the case for my friend, but she's referring to 16-year-old girls getting hysterectomies. And that is legally what the procedure my friend needs is considered. There's no law that says 16-year-olds aren't allowed to get uh, fucking cancer. So if a 16 year old girl gets some sort of uterine polyp or cancer or something awful with her reproductive system that requires a surgery that would render it no longer functional, in that case, libs of TikToks overwhelmingly no, uh, uh, what's the word for it? No exceptions policy that she suggests because this is overwhelmingly wrong no matter what, even if it's helping somebody, would ban that as it already has been in many places. Oh yeah, of course, this is also a big problem with ectoptic pregnancies as well. The problem is the female reproductive system is basically a death trap and it's like a ticking time bomb of disaster. So the fact is that conservatives pushing for these laws that effectively make life-saving care um, that involves uh, like the reproductive system illegal 
it is basically just writing bills that will guarantee the deaths of millions of women. Just guaranteed. By the way, if you want to fight against this, please sign up with Progressive Victory. My link is down below in the descri description. Seriously, Progressive Victory, they're fighting against the Republicans and all of the big battleground states. It's going to be extra important with the election. Please go sign up with Progressive Victory. If you care about protecting your rights as much as these people want to destroy them, then you'll sign up. You don't even have to go out in person to do anything. If you want to stay home all day and still help, you can phone bank. All right? Seriously, get involved.